What's up guys? It's Blue Jellyfish and today I am back with another video. But I am not here alone today. Today guys, me and my good friend Elian, I'm pretty sure I pronounced that right. He's a very good YouTuber. I definitely want you guys to go subscribe to him. Our, we are going to be giving you our thoughts on the top 10 Nintendo Switch games we are most excited for. So, let's get right into this top 10. Coming in at number 10, guys, we have 1-2 Switch. Now, 1-2 Switch, I feel like, is one of the only games that really takes great use of the Switch's Joy-Cons. Now, it's it feels like it's gonna be like a bunch of mini games in it, and that I'm really excited about. Now, my family, they don't really like video games, but games like Wii Sports and Nintendo Land, I could get them to play, and I feel like this is going to be a game like that, too. I feel like it's going to be have a great appeal to parties, and overall, I just cannot wait for this game. Alright, hey guys, my name is Elian. I do gaming just like, just like Blue Jellyfish over here, and um, for number 9, we have Arms, and Arms is like this really cool boxing game that they added to like Nintendo Switch just for the um just because the Wii had like the Wii Sports stuff and the release for Wii U was like the Nintendo Land stuff so they put a release game just like one to Switch for for the Nintendo Switch so yeah and one to Switch is like the main release and they added another release just so it's like better you know and this, this was like this boxing game and stuff, and it was like this arena, and you could equip your own arms and stuff, and you had these extendable arms, and you could move the Joy-Con just to dodge stuff around, and, um, yeah. And you could also, like, do this motion to make, like, a shield, and then when you got your, like, your meter or something, you could press a button and get, like, this super special combo attack. It was really cool. So yeah, that's arms for the back to the jellyfish. And coming in at number eight, guys, we have Minecraft. Now, Minecraft has always just been, had a special place in my heart. I started playing it when I was like seven. It was the craziest thing. And I cannot wait to see Minecraft being played on a portable console. Yeah, I know, we already have Minecraft Pocket Edition, but it's just not the same. I mean, I feel like it's just going to be great on the Switch, and I feel like it's going to be a huge selling point. I just love Minecraft, and I'm sure they're going to throw in something like the Wii U, like throw in like a Mario texture pack or something like that, but that'd be awesome. Alright guys, for number 7, we have Xenoblade 2. Now, these are the two Xenoblade games, well, that are out in the two newest ones. Like, there's other ones before this one. But these are the two newest ones. Xenoblade 2 is supposed to be a direct sequel to this game right here, Xenoblade Chronicles. This one's just like, because people need a new one. Xenoblade Chronicles X, that has nothing to do with the, with, um, with the, this one. But Xenoblade 2 was supposed to be a direct sequel to Xenoblade Chronicles. Which is really great for Xenoblade player fans like me, and I only got into it because of one YouTuber, and and say hi to my dog right there. And yeah, so the Mo the Monado is supposed to be in it. And Monado wasn't in this one, but it, I, it was supposedly reference. I mean, I played through like one chapter of this game and that's it. And I got bored with it because it wasn't as good as this one. This one was just so great. Like it had so good characters, good story, good everything. Really overall, you know, it was great. So yeah, that was number seven, Xenoblade 2. Let's go, Blue Jellyfish. Number six, we have Sonic Mania. Now, one of the most things that Sonic fans complain in the last couple of years is, well, hate to say this, but their new games straight up suck. Sonic Boom, like, what are you guys doing? So, I think a lot of people are just really excited that Sonic, that Sega is finally decided just to go back to that classic Sonic gameplay. And it's perfect timing too, to have it be on the Nintendo Switch. And I just can't wait to see that. I mean, I'm sure it's gonna be great. I think it may be the best Sonic title since Sonic Color. Because really, Sega is doing what they should have done. 
go to a classic Sonic game. All right, coming in at number five, guys, we have Skyrim The Elder Scrolls V. All right, this game, oh, I'm excited for it because it's like a Skyrim game on a Nintendo console? What? Like, I think the only M-rated game we have on, like, good M-rated game on, on, like, a Nintendo console is probably, like, oh, wait, we don't have any. Not any good ones, at least. We have plenty of tea games. Those are great. But none that are like really good right now. If you want a good game right again, you have to go on like Xbox or PS4 or something. PlayStation. Like, like I can't believe we're getting Elder Scrolls V on the Nintendo Switch. Like, this is great. And it says like it's gonna be Dragonborn. <laughs> uh, it's tempting to put a. False Road Dog meme in here. Alright, I'll do it. Now you saw that. Alright, let's go. Let's go to number four. And at our number four spot, we do have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now this game looks like everything that Mario Kart 8 did well, but even better. Just the level design and overall just level layout it just looks amazing to me and i love how they added so many new characters i cannot wait to see what they do with the joy cons and with the joy con mario kart wii was my favorite wii game of all time and i feel like mario kart 8 deluxe isn't even going to be better than mario kart Hey guys, so for number three we have Splatoon 2. Now Splatoon 2 is the sequel to Splatoon. Alright, Splatoon I actually don't have the game, but like, the game looks really good. I've seen a few LPs on YouTube, some really good ones in fact. And then, Splatoon 2 looks even better because, like, they even have the right time. Because it says, because in the real world we have two years that have passed since Splatoon 1. So, Splatoon 2 takes place two years later, and they say they have new fashion trends and stuff, new weapons, new fighting styles, which is cool, and it's gonna be, everything's gonna be portable too, so you can, like, unlike the Wii U, we're able to take this thing, this gamepad, I actually have it right here, this is actually gonna be portable, and instead of having that, like, you're getting too far away, you know? So that's gonna be cool, and like... <laughs> I mean, who's not gonna want the Nintendo Switch, guys? I mean, really, I, like, one thing I really like about Splatoon is that it's this Nintendo shooter, but it's a third-person shooter. That's two unique things. That's two, two unique things. So yeah, that's Splatoon. Splatoon 2 for you. And let's go see what number two is. At number two, we have Sorry guys, the nostalgia is just coming to me. Mario Odyssey. Wow. What can I say about this game? This game is probably the next Mario 64. That revolutionized the gaming industry. Mario Odyssey is just, it just, the game blows me away. It's an open world and you get to travel to different worlds. It's not the boring mushroom kingdom like usually. I'm talking to you, Super Mario 3D World. Even though that was a decent game. You get to travel in cities, forests. It looks amazing and way ahead of its time. I feel like this is going to be Mario's triumphant return after the mm, kind of shaky games on the Wii U. But I am so excited for this game. This is probably the game I am most definitely going to get. This is just, this looks like the future of Mario. And I'll tell you one thing, the future of Mario looks great. Guys, coming in at number one, the number one spot, it's got to be Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now, um, I, uh, I've always been a Zelda fan. Blue Jellyfish over there, is just, he's a Zelda fan. And like, it's just, it, the Breath of the Wild looks so good, like, it's kind of like a Fallout kind of game. Like, it's a do-what-you-want-when-you-want kind of game, too. So, there is a story, too, which is great. Like, it's supposed to say that it takes place 100 years in the future, and he's been, um, he's been put to sleep for 100 years, 
in the resurrection palace and they give you like this little like long tablet thing a stone tablet which is just gonna be the excuse for like your in your uh in game joy con and stuff which that's that's gonna be cool and then like there's this thing where you can take off your shield and shield surf and there's some romantic stuff going on between zelda and Link, actually, believe it or not, I don't think Link's ever gotten even a hug from Zelda. I mean, he's got plenty of thank yous, but not even a hug. And there is one scene where he gets kissed on the cheek, but yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching me and Elian's video. It was a great time. So guys, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to both of our channels. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.